Welcome back to another edition of Strawman Trust Productions. I am your host, Johnny Strawman, and it's still Tell All Tuesday. Now, the second question comes from Jeremiah, and he wants to know, how do you establish a common law trust? Well, since I know no one else is going to do it, I'm going to go ahead and tell you how to establish a common law trust. Right now, today, on Strawman Trust Productions. You ready? Let me find my eraser. We're going to erase your question, and we're going to get up the answers that you're looking for. Now... You need a declaration of trust. You need a certificate of trust. You need a deed of trust. And you need your first minutes of trust. Now, look at the documents like this. The Declaration of Trust is like Articles of Incorporation or Articles of Organization, depending on if you were uh starting a uh, an s corporation or something like that or an llc so if you look at those articles and what they represent the bylaws they basically delineate what is in the trust or what is in the corporation and what uh and who are the players involved so if you look at the declaration of trust like that you would simply say uh you would outline what is your trust about is it a ubot is it an unincorporated business organization trust do you intend to do business uh with your trust then you would put that in there. Is it simply to hold property of some sort? Then you would put that in there. So again, you would want to put this document together outlining the fundamentals of your trust or your entity, your organization, okay? So even uh, uh, all the way back to the point of who's creating it, the trustor, some people call them a grantor, a settler, but in uh, days of yours, as we're talking old school things such as common law trusts, it's called the trustor. You're the trustor is the one that creates the trust, the trustee is the one that facilitates uh, the, the activities of the trust moving forward. He or she is given legal title to the trust. In other words, they are the de facto owners of the trust. The trust has no owner, but they have legal title to be able to do essentially whatever they want with the trust, as long as what they do is in accordance with the declaration of trust. Okay, so now uh, legal title given to, is given to the trustee equitable title is given to the beneficiary or beneficiaries the equitable title is how it sounds uh conveys uh equity to the to the beneficiary so whoever is uh has the equitable title the right to receive the equity um that they're going to get that's what the equitable title is about and that's what's going to that's going to be set forth in, uh those terms are going to be set forth in your declaration of trust of trust as well excuse me Got a little tongue tied there, but again, the trustee is going to have the legal title. The trust, uh, the beneficiaries are going to have the equitable title. They're going to be entitled to the disbursements. They're going to be entitled to any any type of profits or anything like that that's made by the company. Now, a trustee can also get stipends or disbursements in accordance with whatever the declaration says that they're allowed to get, uh, whatever type of uh, um, you know salary uh, it ends up being. Uh, generally, it's called a stipend again or a disbursement. Uh, not a, I did not mean to say a disbursement. Disbursements for the beneficiaries. It's generally called a stipend. Okay, so you would say what your uh, what your compensation is as the trustee. Again, legal title, trustee, beneficiary, equitable title. Moving forward, the certificate of trust is a, it synopsizes the declaration of trust. So let's just say your beneficiaries are three, five, and eight. Okay, you don't want you don't want to broadcast their names. You don't want their names to be in public records and things like that. So if you go and open up a bank account, for example, you would use the certificate of trust, not the declaration of trust. The certificate of trust would say, for example, uh, eldest son of Johnny Justice Strawman. And it would be beneficiary number one. Beneficiary number two would be uh, eldest uh, daughter of Johnny Justice Strawman. And then the third might be, you know, youngest uh, daughter of Johnny Justice Strawman or, or whatever the case may be. Whereas in the declaration of trust, you would go ahead and set forth 
that the beneficiaries are little Johnny Strawman, Janie Strawman, and Tommy Strawman, whatever the case may be. Uh, so, uh, or, or Joni Strawman or whatever. But if, in accordance, you would give their names in the declaration. You would only give uh, their statuses in the, dec uh, in the certificate of trust. So that's something you would use in order to transact certain business, again, with uh, opening up a bank account and things like that. Now, uh, the deed of trust is the, it's the deed, it's the, it's the legal title. So that's going to basically, it's evidence of the transfer of the, cor of the trust corpus. When you hear the term trust corpus, it's the body of the trust. The trust corpus is everything that's held in the trust. So that would be the legal title to everything that's held in the trust. The assets, whatever you you know, when you start the trust, let's say you you bring into the trust, uh, you know, a, a forty Connell line, and you know maybe a parcel of a uh, tract of land in Arizona, whatever. All of that stuff is inside this deed and represented by this deed. Some banks will require the deed because again, it shows the transfer. The certificate again, the certificate of trust synopsizes the declaration. The deed of trust represents the actual title to everything that's in that declaration with respect to assets, monies, and the like. Uh, the first minutes of trust uh, are going to outline what happened. That's what, what took place to create the trust. What did the trust store, what was he thinking? What was she thinking? What, what, what did she want to do? Uh, and, and what did she do and when? And what, you know, what date, what time, in accordance with who, what, who was there? And then signed, dated, that's it. It can be very simple. It can be two, three, five sentences. It could be 25 cents depending on how you like to write and what type of details you like with respect to your affairs. So that's what that's going to represent. Now, I will say also that in your declaration of trust, you're going to want to cite certain laws in order for it to be a common law trust. You can't just say it's a common law trust. I mean, you can do whatever you want. But at the end of the day, if it came down to having to demonstrate anything, approve anything, there would be certain things you would want to you would want to include in there to demonstrate that. For example, the existence of silver. Okay, you have to have a certain amount of silver in order for it to be a constitutionally recognized trust. If you open it with FRNs only, then it's not a common law trust. It's a public trust. It would be just it would just be a normal, just a statutory type of style of trust. Because guess what? FRN notes are floating insurance script. They're they're ultimately public. Uh, they're public policy and they're colorable on the public side. You can you can have cash. Don't get worried about that. But in order but in order to establish the trust, it has to be done with silver. Okay. Now, understanding that, you're also going to want to put certain, um, you back it up with certain empowering clauses. For example, citing Hale versus Hinkle, a Supreme Court case, a United States Supreme Court case was decided in 1905. The date on the case is 1906, but it was decided in 1905. Hale versus Hinkle ultimately uh, <clears throat> states that uh, nationals, citizens, it doesn't matter, that we have an unlimited right to contract. Uh, and the, the, the state can't interfere with that. And that's what a common law trust is, a private contract between parties, okay? So you're, uh, you're going to cite Hale versus Hinkle. You're going to cite Article 1, Section 10 of the United States Constitution, which uh, the, the part in that, because there's several things covered, but the part in that which states essentially that no state shall pass any laws hindering the, or, yeah, hindering the obligation of contract or interfering, in other words, with the obligation of contract. So you're going to have those two... Uh, the constitutional clause and the case law in there, uh, designating it as a constitutional trust, a, co a private contract trust, uh, and a couple of other things as well. But as long as you have those things in there, you're good to go. These are the bare essentials, what you need to establish a common law trust. You heard it right here on Straw Man Trust Productions, Tell All Tuesday first. I'm pretty sure nobody else is giving that information out there. But in any case, if you end up needing more help, you be sure and let Johnny Straw Man know. Hopefully this was informative. Hopefully you have more questions in the future. But in the meantime, stay tuned, stay sovereign, and do not consent.